And now we'd like to turn to Chelsea Jenkins, who is the Executive Director of Virginia Clean Cities. And this will provide another perspective about things that go on in communities and that there are a variety of Clean Cities coalitions around the country. We're very, very glad that Chelsea's here to talk about Virginia's. Thanks, Carol. Um, and there are about 90 Clean Cities coalitions lo located throughout the United States. And I do want to recognize we have Barry Carr over here. And he's the coordinator from New York, so a lot of what I'm going to talk about he's also doing uh, in the state of New York. And I was asked uh, to come and talk about the Clean Cities program uh, in general today. But I did provide a presentation up here that kind of goes over what's driving the market forces that are driving alternative fuels. Um, a little more of an overview of the Clean Cities program. And then we have lots of really great tools, including uh, they now are on your mobile phone, um, like alt fuel station locators and light duty alt fuel vehicle searches and that kind of thing. So that's all in this presentation. Um, and so today's expo is uh, much about the solutions we have on the table to solve the energy challenge that we've faced for a very long time now that we've been talking about. Uh, but I did want to remind everyone that the transportation sector is sucking up the majority of the petroleum um, that we use in the country, and it's actually the only sector since 1973 that's actually increased its use of petroleum. Um, all the other in-use sectors, industrial, commercial, residential, have all shrunk uh, their use of petroleum uh, fuel um, in the last 60 years. And second, we use 25% of the crude oil in the world, and we only have 5% of the population. Um, so this has huge economic implications for our country, including us spending over $200,000 per minute on foreign oil, um, and on the individual household level, uh, sending about $1,800 per year to uh, foreign markets. And as Ryan mentioned, um, the building sector does use uh, the majority of the energy, 40 percent, but on the individual household uh, level, 51 percent of our carbon footprint on the household level is actually due to driving our vehicles. Um, and then another uh, fact that I found related to the health and environmental impacts of transportation is, is that about 50,000 to 100,000 premature deaths occur each year related to air pollution. Um, so we have a problem. We know it's a problem. That's we're all, why we're all here today. Um, and it's really going to take a lot of market forces, government policies, and science and technological innovation to solve it. Um, but I really feel like small um, choices have, uh, or small changes have a really large impact collectively. So the average person can really make small choices. Um, and that's really choosing to drive fuel um, and uh, make like trip chaining and that kind of thing, just do things smarter every day. Um, and those that aren't familiar, how many have heard of the Clean Cities program? Okay, a good amount. There's still some that haven't. Um, the Clean Cities program is actually dedicated to advancing all of these decisions for fleets and for the individual consumer and to help them be smarter with their transportation choices. It's um, been around for 15 years, actually. It's a Department of Energy program. Um, and it's actually the only deployment program uh, within the federal government focused on deploying lower, lower carbon fuels and making more energy efficient transportation choices. Uh, the program doesn't pick winners or losers. We have uh, fuel and technology neutrality. So we're able to really support local decisions um, and work with a fleet or a consumer to decide what makes the most sense for them depending on what their economic situation is or where they are in the country. Uh, the technology portfolio really covers the gamut um, in terms of alternative fuels and advanced technology uh, vehicles and energy efficiency measures. Um, and in order to help certain markets achieve market penetration uh, with these lower carbon domestic energy sources, we really partner with any type of organization to, to bring a particular alt fuel program to fruition. Um, as I mentioned, there's about 90 of us scattered throughout the country. We cover, the boundaries cover over 80% of the population. So no matter where you are in the country, you can most likely find a Clean Cities Coalition to work with. Uh, in terms of top accomplishments, the coalitions have displaced over 2.5 billion gallons of gasoline since 1993. And that's 
essentially equivalent of removing over 500,000 cars from the road or almost 300 million tons of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. Uh, and coalitions have been directly responsible for the deployment of over 70 percent of the alternative fuel vehicles that are on the road today and the more than 6,000 alternative refueling stations in the U.S. Um, and there's about just around 700,000 AFVs on the road and coalitions have been responsible for putting most of those on the road, either through funding or technical assistance. Um, and we're, we have a, a great national parks program. A lot, uh, we've been responsible for a lot of the efforts going on in the national parks, as we know. Air quality is very important to them. Um, and inducing behavior change, education and outreach is critically important. So a lot of coalitions spend a lot of time on education and outreach. And in 2008, we reached over 113 million people through over 1,300 different uh, types of outreach activities throughout the country. And so that's kind of a background of the program. Um, and a lot of folks ask me, well, what do you actually do day to day? What does your job entail? So a typical day for a coordinator might uh, consist of hosting a media event or a grand opening after we've worked with a fuel retailer to put in biodiesel or ethanol. Uh, we might facilitate a meeting, for example, with all the stakeholders involved in getting uh, regions ready for electric vehicles. We might write a proposal for a fleet that wants to do a CNG uh, waste hauler project. But most of our time is really um, relationship building and networking, bringing the right people to the table to have the whole package um, that to overcome the chicken and the egg barrier that everyone talks about with alt fuels. And so our coalition, Virginia Clean Cities, is, uh, happens to be a 501c3 not-for-profit, but not all of the coalitions are nonprofits. They're all housed sometimes in energy offices or councils of governments. Uh, we have six full-time employees scattered throughout three offices in the state. One's at James Madison University, one's in Virginia Beach, and one's in Richmond. Um, and that's six full-time employees that work all day, every day, dedicated to decreasing our dependence on foreign oil and displacing uh, petroleum in Virginia. Some examples of what we've been up to um, are we are managing the Southeast Propane Auto Gas Development Program, and this is one of the Recovery Act projects. Some of you might know that there was $300 million dollars through the Recovery Act for Clean Cities pilot programs. And so 25 different uh, projects were funded up to $15 million with 50% matching funds to do basically any type of alt fuel advanced technology vehicle deployment or infrastructure development. And our program uh, it covers nine southeastern states from essentially Maryland and D.C. all the way down to Florida and over to Mississippi. And we're going to convert 1,200 vehicles to run on propane, autogas. We'll put in at least 17 propane refueling stations in the first two years and then move to uh, increase in public availability. And we're expecting to create or retain 600 jobs just through this one program. A couple other programs I'll mention is uh, we're working with the Virginia Port Authority on a green operators program to gr green the drayage trucks. Uh, they're very dirty. They usually get the, the last round of life and uh, the trucks out there. And so we're trying to hit a 20% penetration of replacing them to meet 2007 air quality standards. And we're on target to do that by next year. Uh, we're also facilitating the Virginia Get Ready initiative, which is basically uh, focused on getting Virginia ready for electric vehicles and um, which some of them are uh, due out this fall, actually, the Volt and um, Think, which Barry talked about earlier, some of those others. So that's a little bit about what we're doing. Um, and just in closing, I wanted to mention that there's, does anyone know how many registered cars there are in the U.S. today? Just light-duty cars? No? There's 250 million, over 250 million registered light-duty cars. And so there's... There's only 700,000 alternative fuel vehicles, and that includes light, medium, and heavy duty. So that's a quarter of 1% of um, the population of just the light duty cars. So it's a very small percentage, and we've been working for over 15 years on this. Um, we've made a lot of progress, but there's still a lot more to do. Um, and I would say that, that the best place to start is to to get in touch with your local Clean Cities Coalition because they're really where the rubber meets the road. 
Um, and I just want to thank Carol for having us.